I am Ram Mohan. I am working as head of electronics and communications engineering department at Government Polytechnic, Mahabhub Nagar. The subject we are dealing here is the basic electrical and electronics engineering. The topic is inductors and transformers. The current session discussion is limited to the subtopic of self-inductance. Objectives On the completion of this session, you will be able to know the definition of an inductor, the definition of an inductor, the concept of self-inductance, the factors affecting the inductance of a coil. Yes. Now let us recap some of the topics relevant to us till now what we have covered. What is a passive component? The components by themselves which are not capable of amplifying an electrical signal or which do not have the ability to produce any gain they are referred as passive components now oh, let us have some examples of the passive components so some of the examples of the components passive components are can you name yes resistors capacitors and inductors Now let us see what an inductor is. Inductor is a passive component. It is nothing but a coil wound on a core of some suitable material. On a core of suitable material. So it is wound, wounded on a core. The core may be a magnetic material such as iron, ferrite or air core. Even air core is possible. Then it can be used to store electric electromagnetic energy. And the inductor is denoted by the letter L. Let us look at the symbol of the inductor. So this is the symbol of of the inductor. Sorry, and it is denoted by a letter L, capital L. Let us visualize how they look like physically in real life. So here you will be seeing few coils or inductors actually so the middle one is a toroidal core ferrite of course middle two the bigger one as well as the smaller one they are both toroidal cores and the left one is a ferrite cylindrical core and similarly the right one as well is a inductor with normal core. Now the induction of AC let us see. So by varying when there is a varying current that is flowing through the coil that is wounded on a core then there will be it will result in a varying magnetic field. And when the direction changes, the direction of the magnet field also changes. So it is represented in the figure here. So when it is increasing, you can see that the direction of the magnetic field that is varying induced in the ferrite core is in the anti-clockwise direction. Uh, but when this varying current is going to the second half cycle of the waveform that is it is coming to the negative side 
then you can see that the varying magnetic field that is induced in the core is in the right direction that is clockwise direction so this is how the current is going to induce and the directions of the magnetic field in the coils so here we are let us these are the observations or findings of the previous diagram as the current increases in the value the magnetic field expands outward from the conductor then as the current decreases the magnetic field collapses into the conductor and an expanding and collapsing magnetic field is the same as that of a field in the motion so this moving flux cuts across the current carrying conductor so as a result the voltage or emf is induced in the wire itself so as a result of this moving magnetic flux an emf is induced in the wire which is actually causing that also so it is able now we are actually trying to concentrate on the concept of self inductance so it is the ability of an inductor to induce voltage in itself when the current changes so as we have seen that the varying flux will induce an voltage in itself the very coil that has actually caused it so here that is the reason why it is called as self inductance and then it is denoted by the letter l it is ability of an inductor to induce voltage in itself when the current changes it is denoted by the letter l and its units are henrys now consider the following circuit diagram so here you have a applied voltage as v that is ac and i is the current flowing then vl is the voltage drop across the inductor now let us see so the voltage induced here is vl across an inductor having the inductance of l that is proportional to di by dt that is rate of change of current that is passing through the coil so the voltage here is proportional to di by dt okay so the voltage is proportional to current rate of change of current so this gives vl equal to minus l di by dt so l vl is the induced voltage in volts and l is the inductance in henrys so di by dt is the rate of change of current in amperes per second the minus the minus sign here in the equation indicates that the polarity of the induced voltage opposes the change in the current that produces it so the induced voltage or the current due to induced emf is itself opposing the polar the very source that is that is actually causing this that is producing this well let us see if di by dt is 1 amperes per second and vl is 1 volt then the inductance l is equal to 1 henry hence a coil inductance l is 1 henry hence a coil has an inductance of 1 henry if the induced voltage of 1 volt is induced in it when the current through it changes at the rate of change of 1 amperes per second so this is for 1 henry 
Now let us look into the factors affecting the voltage of inductance. So here you have a coil on which which is wounded on a core that is having a cross section area of A. N is the number of turns of the coil and the permeability of the core is mu which is written or denoted in the figure on the right side. Now let us see how to understand about the factors affecting the value of inductance. Here the inductance of the coil is directly proportional to the square of the number of turns n and then the cross section area of the coil where a is the area of cross section then it is the permeability of the core mu so let us see how they are related again so the equation that was the inductance of the coil is given by the equation here l equal to mu naught into mu r into a into n square by l where mu naught and mu naught are the permeabilities and mu naught is the absolute permeability of the air that is a standard value it is 1.2 into 10 to the power of minus 6 hendes per meter and mu r is the relative permeability of the core so it is core specific factor and whereas n is the number of turns of the coil wound on the core and a is the area of cross section of the coil and l is the length of the coil so the inductance equation is expressed as above where l is equal to mu naught into mu r into a and n square divided by the l Sorry, let us just review the factors affecting the value of inductance and also the expression for the L that is inductance or self inductance here simply inductance. So L is equal to mu naught into mu r a and n square where mu naught is the relative permeability of the core that is core specific and then mu naught is the absolute permeability of the air that is 1.2 into 10 power of minus 6 hendes per meter and then where n is the number of turns of the coil and a is the area of cross section of the coil and l is the length of the coil let us summarize the things what we have covered till now so the ability of an inductor to induce the voltage in itself when the current changes is called its self inductance so, so, so the self inductance or simply inductance is denoted by l the unit of inductance is henry let us see a small quiz the inductor is a dash component its active or passive it is passive component next one inductor can be used to store dash type of energy it is electro magnetic energy then dash is the ability of an inductor to concentrate the magnetic flux it is the permeability of the material. If a conductor allows flux to 
pass through more easily than it is said to have dash permeability high or low it is high now the property of a conductor to induce voltage when the current through it is changed is called choice a capacitance choice b resistance choice c inductance choice d conductance what is the right answer it is inductance now next one the standard inductors are made up of one manganese two copper three c choice steel choice four is aluminium normally what is a inductor made up of we are referring to the coil material so it should be copper now let us see the next one the magnitude of the induced emf in a conductor depends upon the dash amount of flux cut amount of flux linkages then rate of change of flux linkage then next choice d is flux density of the magnetic field what is the right answer it is rate of change of flux linkage now let us look at the some frequently asked questions from the examination point of view define self inductance and this has appeared many times in our board examinations so you are asked to define self inductance sometimes you may be asked also to write the expression for inductance or self inductance that is l equal to mu naught into mu r into a into n square divided by l well thank you very much let us conclude here for this session now to continue in our session let us look into the objectives before us so on the completion of this session again you will be able to know the concept of mutual inductance and coefficient of the concept of mutual inductance and coefficient of coupling let us recap what we have discussed so far first one is self inductance and also we have discussed about the factors affecting the self inductance that is our expression for l equal to mu not mu r into a n square divided by l yeah so let us see from known to unknown now we know what happens when a coil l1 is excited with an ac what happens what happens when we excite a coil with an ac so you have a coil l1 and current i so you have a actuating voltage v what happens so the magnetic flux is produced around the coil as shown in the figure below so this is what happens so there is a magnetic flux that will be produced around the coil and around each winding ring separately as you can see specifically on the figure place another coil that is l2 near to the coil l1 and then if a meter g is connected across the coil l2 it shows some deflection so it's an experiment we are trying to conduct so you have a coil one 
and coil 2 l2 so they are placed in the close vicinity so that they can react with each other that means this coil l2 is placed within the magnetic field produced by the coil l1 then you are connecting a mat a meter galvanometer in the coil l2 so in the figure left side you can see that there is a galvanometer so you see that the galvanometer is deflecting that means something is flowing through that because of which you are seeing the deflection of that so this can also be done in the figure on the right hand side what you have seen so there can be a common core as well well so can you guess why the galvanometer g shows some deflection because yes it is because we have placed our coil l2 in the vicinity or the magnetic flux of the coil l1 so we understand that whole or part of the flux produced by the coil l1 that is linking with the top the our coil l2 and that is inducing some voltage into this so it is resulting in some current flow because of which we can see the galvanometer is deflecting now let us see this mutual inductance the ability of the varying current in a core coil in one coil sorry the ability of the varying current in one coil to induce voltage in a nearby coil is known as the mutual inductance and this property is denoted by the letter m and once again the units are calories so the mutual inductance is denoted by capital letter m and the units are once again Henry's because it is related to inductance now let us see a figure now so on the left side you have a coils which are wound on two arms of a core which is an iron core and this will be normally u and i core so here you have two coils which are wound one coil on each arm of the core so right side figure is showing you the interaction or reaction in in the core unit that is happening because of the voltage applied to the inductor l1 So there will be linkages and I use the current flowing in the coil left side L1 and you see that a voltage of VL2 is induced in the coil L2 which is on the right arm. So here the mutual inductance can be expressed as M equal to VL2 divided by LDI by DT that means voltage induced in coil L2 divided by rate of change of current where here VL2 is the mutually induced EMF that is measured in the second coil and DI by DT is the rate of change of current through the first coil DI by DT is the rate of change of current through the, the first coil now let us see these pictures one more so here you can see that l1 is a coil there and l2 coil is actually wounded perpendicularly across that so let us see what happens there so here you have two coils once again they are wounded on a core 
what have you understood till now so this is another figure where you have two coils bound on the the one we have seen there it is u and i core it's like a ring toroidal ring which is rectangular but then what have you understood from the pictures did you grasp anything by looking at the pictures no let us see so observations from the picture are from picture 1 the flux of l1 coil does it not at all link anything with the coil l2 because it is lying perpendicular and at the bottom of the coil l1 so there is no mutual inductance at all in the figure 1 coming back to figure 2 what happens here all the flux that is produced by coil L1 is linked, it gets links with the coil L2. And here the mutual induction is maximum. Now it is clear from pictures that two coils are said to be magnetically coupled. If fully or partly the flux produced by one coil is links is linking with the other one then let us see this coefficient of coupling the degree of magnetic coupling is known as coefficient of coupling or it is the fraction of total flux from one coil linking another coil is the coefficient of coupling. So the degree of magnetic coupling is known as coefficient of coupling or the fraction of total flux from one coil linking another coil is the coefficient of coupling for understanding sake. So it is a fraction of the total flux from the source coil that is getting linked up with the next coil where you are trying to measure its linkages in terms of current that is flowing through the coil. So that is how we can see with a galvanometer and this is for our understanding which is defined as the coefficient of coupling and it is denoted by the letter k so the coefficient of coupling is denoted by k and that is equal to flux linkages between l1 and l2 divided by the total flux produced by the coil l1 because l1 is the source now let us see further the coefficient of coupling k is a constant you are telling that it is the coefficient of coupling and there will be same units it has no units it is a constant and it has no units so its value ranges from 0 to 1 so maximum can be 1 which is normal not possible, of course the coefficient of coupling between two coils is given by k equal to m divided by square root of l1 and l2 it's a product where m is a mutual inductance in henry's and k is the coefficient of coupling and l1 l2 are the self inductance of two coils l1 and l2 are the self inductance are just inductance of each coil individually if in the above equation if k is not equal to 1 then the coils are said to be lightly coupled <coughs> and suppose if k is equal to 1 the coils are said to be tightly coupled and if the coefficient of coupling is 0 the coils are said to have no coupling at all 
let us summarize the discussions what we have done till now the ability of the varying current in one coil to induce voltage in a nearby coil is known as the mutual inductance yes then the unit of mutual inductance is henry's because it is finally inductance then the degree of magnetic coupling is known as coefficient of coupling and what what will be the value of k so the value of k will range between 0 to 1 and k is a constant and now let us see some quiz or let us try to recollect some check our knowledge our memory rather the ability of the varying current in one coil to induce voltage in a nearby coil is known as first option self inductance second option mutual inductance and third option inductance and none what's it called ability of the varying coil in one coil to induce voltage in a nearby coil which is in its vicinity of field or its field it is called as mutual inductance now let's see the next one the degree of magnetic coupling is known as self inductance mutual inductance coefficient of coupling or none of the above what's it called as it is the coefficient of coupling now let us see some frequently asked questions in the topics we have discussed and uh, that is in from the exam point of view number one it is define mutual inductance next one define coefficient of coupling then we can also think of one more assignment sort of a question like write a short notes on mutual inductance and coefficient of coupling okay well thank you very much with this we will conclude our session here and thank you very much all of you